What up guys, Victor here, and today is opening day of lobster season. If you guys want to see how we caught all these bad boys, these bugs, these cockroaches of the sea, stick around because it's going to be a good time. Guys, so we ended up getting 17 lobster. We had an awesome time out on the water. Saw a bunch of life, barely any boats out, because it's crazy. For many season, everybody goes nuts. It's, just, it's, it's as if people don't know that lobster season goes on from August 6th all the way to the end of March. So we had the entire ocean to ourselves. We got a cooler full of lobster. So stick around, I'm gonna clean one up for you guys, and we're gonna do an awesome catch and cook. So this is how you clean a Florida spiny lobster. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is ring them. I'm gonna just take my hand, Spin in opposite directions. You got one on the tail, one on the head, and that's what you get. That's what you get. Most people only eat this. This is the uh, the tail meat, but you can eat meat out of here. And what you do is, they sell little cleaning sticks to get the vein and the poop out of the lobster. But you can just take the antenna out of the lobster, and there's a little hole right here on the lobster tail. And you got to make sure you clean your lobster because otherwise you're going to be cooking them, and you're going to be eating poop. So you want to stick it in its little hole right here. That is his butthole. You stick it in there, and these lobster, their antenna have backwards facing spines, and now you just simply pull it out. And what's gonna come out 
Well, actually, sometimes what will happen is you'll push it out the other end. So here is his, I guess you could say his intestinal tract right there. And it's full of sand and little stuff. Throw that guy away. Now you got a beautiful tail for dinner. What up guys, Chef Vic here, back with another Kitchen Cook, and today I'm very excited. And you guys should be too, because it is finally lobster season down here in South Florida. So what that means for us Floridians is we get to enjoy one of the best seafood dishes out there, which is Florida Spiny Lobster. That is what I'm preparing for you guys today. So look forward to a lot of lobster dishes coming here in the future, all the way up till March we have our season open. So let's get started on that dish. To begin our lobster scampi, I got my fancy olive oil bottle, which I'm still so proud of and I got a big pan right here. I'm gonna oil it up. And I'm using a lot of oil and butter in the beginning because this is gonna be a sauce for a lot of people. I'm using six whole spiny lobster and this is gonna be a dish that I use for today and the next day. So we have an entire stick of butter, which is eight tablespoons, my olive oil. Let that guy go, got it on medium heat. We're gonna come over here. First thing for our lobster scampi, I got two beautiful little shallots right here. I'm gonna cut these guys up. And the other thing that's gonna be going in here is garlic. Those are my first two flavors going into this dish. Now the reason I'm doing the shallots first and not the garlic is because the garlic will burn and I can cook my shallots, um, get them brown, a little bit of caramelization in before I put the garlic in. Oh, and by the way, if you guys are wondering who's filming this today, Brooke, say what's up. Hi guys. Turn around so they know who's there. Okay, next thing we got going on is garlic. The shallots are decently browned in there and have begun to shrunk. I'm gonna go straight with my garlic, brush it up into here. I believe the correct word was shrink. Shrink. What did I say? Shrunk. Whoops. And I'm doing a hefty amount of wine in this dish because it's going to just reduce by half. It's not going to be too winey of a flavor because all of that wine is going to cook out. You're supposed to save the drop to sip. Yum. So we're going to let this guy come to a boil and when it comes to a boil just kind of watch it and wait until this volume reduces by half. And this is my designated cheese shredder for life right here. We got some parmesan. Good stuff. Always better to buy the block cheese, I think, than shredded cheese already. And you can put this back in the fridge and it just stays good for a long time. Oops. Great form, bro. I'm a professional. Wow. You must be Italian or something. When I was cleaning the lobster, Brooke and I were kind of pressed for time, so I kind of want to go more in detail about the cleaning process once you have your tail. So this is the spiny lobster tail, and this is the part that most people eat. Now you can eat a lot of the head meat and the the, uh, the legs, but the majority of people just stick with the tail. So this was frozen, it's thawed now. What I'm gonna do is, you want a thick, you definitely want a thicker knife for sure when you're dealing with these lobster tails. So what you're gonna wanna do is find the middle of the lobster and just go right down the center on both the front and back end. And then what you're gonna see is, is that you can actually take your hands on both sides of the lobster and I'm gonna be pushing out with my thumbs and then up with my fingers and it'll just kind of crack right down the middle. You can hear it just like so. And here's a really neat trick that I wanna show you guys that Brooke's dad taught me. Now, he noticed, cause he's caught a lot more lobster than I have in my lifetime. And lobster have this membrane right here that attaches from their meat to their shell. Now depending on what stage they're molting, so what lobster do is, like other crabs, they don't grow with their shell. They actually shed their shell and grow a new shell every few weeks, every few months. And depending on what stage they're in, this will be very, very tough. Now this guy is actually rather soft, but I'm gonna show you what you would do to get rid of this membrane, because you can actually kind of like fillet it out. So I got a knife right here. And by the way, just a quick little note, I'm not affiliated with this company whatsoever, but if you guys are looking for a really good affordable fillet knife, Dexter right here, I love them. You guys see me use those bubble blades in the videos. Save yourself the money, this is half the price, maintains its edge, love these knives. 
So see the difference between these two? I just cracked open another lobster and you can kind of tell how this one's a little bit more translucent pink and this has got a little bit of a darker coloration to it. This membrane right here is already kind of thicker and it's already turning into something that's unappetizing for someone who really doesn't like seafood to eat. Here's a little trick. You guys saw me go down the middle on this belly side. Now to kind of crack it, I'm going to take my hands and press down and you can hear that it, it cracks. That way I don't beat myself up and now I can just crack it open right down the middle. So I opened up all six shells and I was trying to find that membrane for you guys but I couldn't find it so I'm going to show you how to how you would go about doing it. I'm gonna go right down here, down the middle. This is the membrane and this is the two lobes, I guess you could say, of the tail. And I would just fillet it and skin it just like I would any other fish. Just kinda just slide it right there and it'll slide right off of the membrane. So now all you're left with is the actual lobster meat and that membrane is stuck right there. Always check to see if you have that tough membrane because it might turn some noses away from your dinner table. Now lobster meat is very easy to work with. It's very soft, kind of like shrimp, but the difference is when you're cooking shrimp and lobster, lobster will be a lot more firm when you go to eat it, as opposed to. So with that being said, you want nice bite-sized pieces, especially something like pasta. You don't want a giant, chunky uh, piece of lobster in your dish. Gonna go with linguine for our pasta of choice. Water's boiling. Get those bad boys in there. Got my lobster in a bowl, I'm gonna season them up. We are gonna salt them up. Not a lot of salt, because I have not salted my sauce for the scampi yet with the wine. Garlic powder. Got a little, add, we gotta add a little spice to our dish. So I have crushed red pepper flakes. A little bit of more seafood goodness, old bay. I'm just gonna mix it together with my hands. I'm gonna put my lobster straight into my wine butter mixture and I'm gonna cook it in that. That way my lobster won't dry out at all and it's gonna be super tender and flavorful. Two last things to our scampi. One being I have four little tomatoes left in the fridge. I'm gonna put them at the end because I didn't really want to cook them or them to be mushy. I want them to be firm and then Got a little bag of spinach, baby spinach. Put this guy in the very last. It cooks fast. Give it a stir, and we're gonna cover this guy and let that spinach wilt up. Since I was running low on sauce, I'm gonna take some of my starchy pasta water and pour it straight into my scampi. Our spinach is wilted down. Take a look at that. And I got my linguine. I'm gonna go in, give it one nice toss. Mix it all together. There you go, Grandma. Thank you. Let's go. Yes. You know what time it is? Yeah. Seven. No, what time it's it dinner is? time. It's dinner, dinner time. time. And what do you think about dinner? It's lobster time. Very good. You got that right. Delicious. Yeah. And a little wine, a little spinach, a little butter, spinach. and lobster. Good. Good to hear. Listen, if you guys have a happy girlfriend, you're gonna have a happy life. So what does is, what is Bert think? <laughs> it's really good. Is it? Yeah, it's really good. And honestly, I'm not the biggest lobster fan. I love catching it, but lobster, I don't know. And it's really good. Yeah. So if I like it, you did good. <laughs> Brooke doesn't like catching lobster. She loves catching lobster. Everything I learned about catching lobster is from her and her family. She is a beast underwater, guys. <laughs> I'm serious, she's really good at diving. One of the very few girls in South Florida that can free dive that good. Okay, you're up, Grandma. Very good. Very good? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. All right, guys, my plate is empty, and I'm telling you right now that out of all the dishes I've made, I know you guys tell you, I know I tell you guys that every dish is really good, but this one was really banging. It was out there. It was fire, so you guys have to try it. You know, it really wasn't that unhealthy in terms of calories either, so it's kind of a lighter dish, because all I did was is, um, you know, I had that one stick of butter and a little bit of olive oil in the beginning, but this dish just fed four people, and look at all of it. There's still more than half remaining, and this is a dish that you can eat two days, and it is just so good. 
So if you guys catch Florida Spiny Lobster and want to spice up your recipe, you're tired of just grilling those tails, just dipping it in butter, and you want to spice up your Spiny Lobster game, try this out. The spinach, the tomatoes, every little thing just came together. And I love dishes like this because, you know, it's not like anything takes away from anything. Everything just builds upon itself. And even the lobster in the sauce, you kind of get a little bit of a fishy, a seafood clammy juice taste in that pasta. I really liked it. There's the proof in the pudding. My plate is empty. Get yourself a little bread at the end because there's gonna be a pile of juice on your plate. Dip it in there. So good. So if you guys like this video, you guys wanna see more diving videos, more spearfishing videos, more catching cooks, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Please make sure to like this video and I'll see you guys in that next video.